chaotic. Good morning, everybody. I know that I have been MIA for the last few weeks, and I've just kind of taken this time to rest my body and my mind and all of those things. I didn't realize how just absolutely run down I was and overwhelmed and all of those things. Um, this diagnosis of lupus kind of really threw me for a loop. I'm going to discuss that way more on my other channel, Farm to Table. Um, I'm just catching you guys up on what I've been doing the last few weeks. And we will be getting back to the build um, next week. Kira is coming into town. I will be picking her up on the 17th. And so I will be getting help. And I know you guys are really excited to see her. And I do have to say, because I've been getting a lot of questions of how is Kimmy doing, and to be honest with you, I really have not heard from her very much. So I have to assume she's doing well, and um, but I can't really update you on what's going on with her because she's just kind of um, delved into her own world and is doing her own thing um, at this time. So... Um, I guess that's about all that I have to say about that. It, But what I'm going to talk about is that whole processing of that. I mean, that added on to this lupus. Um, I think anytime somebody leaves your, your home, if, whether it's children, a, a relationship breakup, a, a marriage, a divorce, any, a death, any of those things, someone just deciding to move, there is this time of processing that and I feel like that is a part of what I've been doing these last few weeks. Um, even though I knew Kim was not coming back before, her coming and getting the rest of her stuff and um, really truly set that in and so I was dealing with those feelings and those emotions and um you just kind of feel like at the age of 50, I should have gotten, figured this out and it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it has been. So I've been dealing with that. I've been processing those emotions. And, and if you've been watching this channel, you know that I'm a recovering alcoholic and I have to process those. I have to learn to sit in my emotions, allow them to happen, not live in them, let them process through and then continue on. But I do think the biggest thing that I've been dealing with is this level of just pain um, in my body and resting my body and figuring out what's going to work for me for the long run, um, changing absolutely everything in my life as far as chemicals that I'm around, um, anything that I put on or in my body and doing whatever it is that I can heal my body so that I don't have this autoimmune. That's what I've been reading. I've been doing a ton of research. So how has that actually affected my build? Um, it has stopped everything for now. I'm jumping back into this week. I'm starting to finally feel better and I'm starting to feel like I can actually start chipping away at this again. Um, I did make a really big decision on my countertop, not this one that you see here at the sink. 
I will actually address that though. I'm not sure I'm a really big fan of the butcher block. And I'm pretty sure quite a few of you mentioned that I'm not going to like that around the cow, um, sink or whatever. I don't think I like it at all. I'm, And I don't know if I just haven't found the right sealant for it. Um, I am treating it with a butcher block oil. Um, but it just doesn't seem to get clean. And as you guys know here on this build, I, I've been dealing with a lot of dust or whatever. But um, a little, lot of dust and dirt. And I'm finding that the soot from the fireplace and those kinds of things land on this and are in the air or whatever. And it's really hard to clean and make look really clean. So for that reason, I personally would not recommend a butcher block countertop at all. Like not at all. <laughs> and I th really truly thought that this was something that I would just absolutely love. And, um, and I don't, I don't because I can't scrub it clean and have it look super, super clean. Now I have sanded it down and put new oil on it and then it looks beautiful and clean and wonderful. But that's obviously not something that I can do on a daily basis when I'm cleaning. So that would just be way too much to ask. So this is actually not something that I personally would repeat um, anywhere. Now I do love my giant butcher block that I have that I can move around. That, that was the cutout for the sink. And I really love that. I move that around and I use it and I like it. And so I would, would totally do big butcher block so that I could move those around and cut and whatever. But yeah, this is not going to be something that I repeat. Who else has thought that and actually had butcher block? So I'm just kind of cleaning up for the, the day, organizing my grandsons last minute um, were coming Bye -bye. to visit me. And... <laughs> I do just absolutely love it when they get oh to come spend the day, but it does kind of stop any real nice. progress as far as anything. I had really only hoped to get things cleaned up and straightened up and prepped for the rest of the week. That's kind of how my schedule goes. Um, I've mentioned it before. I really wish I was not living in this building while I was working on it. It would definitely have gone quite a bit faster than what it's going now, but, um, <clears throat> but getting to have them come over, having them live really close to me is really wonderful. And they do leave for two months in the summer to go visit their other grandmother. So I cherish these moments 100%. Now I actually made my water really, really hot. I boil the water on the stove cause I do not have my hot water running yet. And I was really hard doing all my dishes because it was burning my hands. And I just kind of do a rotation. So I have rinse water and then that rinse water becomes the next sink of water to wash in. And I just kind of heat it. So I do that rotation. That's actually worked really well. It's just kind of a camping trick that I learned long ago. And um, But it is really nice having it actually inside and um, moving into that direction. But... Um, it's still just a lot. I'm really ready to get things organized and done and, and put away and where everything has its space and getting that finished. I will be continuing to work on the tiny home for the rest of, uh, well, until it's done. Those are the videos that you're going to be seeing. We will be working on the shop and um, filming and doing that kind of stuff as we're working on it. Um, that will be as I have equipment. So, but I won't, I'm not going to actually put those, release those videos until later in the season. I want to show you guys this, the finish of this tiny house and I really want to get it done. So that's what's to be expected for that. Um, I think in our series of talking about the 12 steps of AA, um, I've gotten a lot of really good feedback. I'm going to continue to do that. 
This week, we're actually talking about steps eight and nine. And eight, I'm going to combine the two because they go together. Eight is where you make a list of all of the people that you owe an amends to. And nine is about making the amends. And I, there's a couple of things that I, in my personal journey, struggled with was one, the definition of forgiveness, because my actual definition of forgiveness was very different than what forgiveness actually is. You can forgive somebody, but not give that person access to your life. Um, Or you can forgive somebody and give them 100% access to your life. And I had a couple of people in my life that I was like, I'm not going to forgive them for what they did because what they did was so horrible. And that really, truly held me back. Um, I had been listening to a, a, listening to a few shorts and stuff where people are talking about where they've 100% cut off from their toxic parent. They've got no contact with people for whatever reason. And they did not regret that at all. And I did that. I was no contact with my biological father. He was extremely toxic in and out of prison, in and out of um, being sober, not being sober. And I, my, my prayer and my thought, what my work with my sponsor was that I would address it when God put it in front of me. But until then, my job was to work on dealing with those emotions so that when that opportunity was placed in front of me, I was able to do it. And that actually took me three years. It took me three years to realize that as people, we do the best that we can. In general, there are people that are just out there to be mean and hateful. Um... But there's usually a story behind why we are the way that we are. And when I stopped and I looked at his childhood, his examples, the tools that he has in his um, wheelhouse and his box and, and how he's learned to handle and deal with life. And I looked at him as that small child that had that trauma in his life and was able to then find empathy for that small child because the studies have absolutely found that you stop developing unless you deal with that trauma Um, and so you're looking at a small child that doesn't know how to deal with trauma inside a full grown adult's body Now, that absolutely does not give the excuse of now I get to go abuse people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I had to find a place inside me to find empathy for somebody who was absolutely broken, even though that person caused harm to me. Three years into my recovery and working on that particular thing at any opportunity that I could, We ebb and flow in our emotional uh, sobriety. And so obviously I'm not going to work on something like that when I'm not emotionally ready to work on it. But I was able to show up when I needed to show up. When I was visiting my grandmother and he came over and she was so worried about me not ever coming back of because he would do something that would hurt me and I would never come back so it was really my amends to her at her end of life that gave me the strength to show up in front of him and I had done all the work and I had done all the stuff so he was no longer able to hurt me he was still very toxic and I had my boundary And I went there and I visited. And when he became toxic, I left. And I didn't carry this hate and ugliness about him. It was more about her and my amends to her. 
There are some people that you can forgive them because they were wounded children. You don't have to allow them back into your life. And I think that's one of the biggest um, lessons on amends that I had. I had to study on what a real amends was. And when you're, it's not just an I'm sorry, it's acknowledging the behavior, apologizing for the behavior, and then changing the behavior. And if you don't do all three of those things, you actually really have not made an amends. You have not truly apologized to somebody for the behavior that you did to them. And on those people that are extremely toxic, I can forgive. That does not mean access to my life. That was a big game changer for me. So that's steps eight and nine, just in a very small nutshell. I could talk for hours on on those particular particular two topics, but I want to talk about what I'm doing in the actual video now. I have struggled with this countertop and how I wanted to do it because I was so disappointed in the butcher block. And I had purchased those tiles. It was a last minute, like, ooh, here are these things, I'm going to do this. And then they didn't just fit the entire space, which caused a huge amount of conflict in my brain because how was I going to make this work when it wasn't really what I wanted to do? And so the last few weeks, I've just been sitting on this and I've been trying to figure out how could I make the, that work and how can I do the, use the material that I had. And I finally just made the decision that it was stopping me so much that I was taking all of that stuff back, returning it to the store and looking at these finished countertops. And this particular one that I found is the exact same look. Um, it fits the space. It my countertops are 25 inches and this comes a little bit past um it's a little bit bigger than that or the actual countertop is i think a little bit smaller than that it says it's 25 inches but it's 25 inches with the lip so i do have the um solid plywood piece of plywood underneath and i just set this on top i do think that i'm gonna go back and pull that plywood out and set this in and see if that will slip all the way back to the wall because right now there's a very small gap not a small gap it's actually a pretty I would say a half an inch and I'm either gonna have to put a filler piece back there and then be fine with the way that this is um, I do like how far out it comes so that's that is nice um, but I love it I love it it has solved the problem it's, you know, let's be realistic. I am going to be throwing a leg of lamb or a leg of goat up on here and deboning those um, because that's what I do. I process animals that I raise for my freezer. And so I needed something that I could sterilize, that could be really clean, that nothing was going to seep into grout or anything like that. So this fit that bill. And I'm extremely happy that I made that decision and made this change. I think you guys are going to love it too. Tell me what you think. Now, it doesn't come all the way to the stove. I would have had to have bought a 10-foot one and then cut off 8 feet 2 inches. <laughs> so I made the call to not even worry about that. I do have the finished edging that I will be putting on to it. And uh, I love it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you and your time and the fact that you support me. I hope that you will enjoy watching either the last video that I put out or uh, YouTube has picked a video that fits your algorithm and that you may like out of my series of videos. Have a great week.